Okay, we're at the uh, kind of the third stage, the third and hopefully final stage of this artwork for t-shirt project. And we have now the fish. All of the pieces are kind of cleaned up. If I do a command Y, I can see in the over the uh, preview, the outline preview, that I don't have any extra pieces uh, overlapping each other. We're back to another command Y. And so I have a couple things I want to do. I want to make a trapping area that goes between these color areas so that if one color gets moved a little bit, you don't see a white line through here. Also, to create the white line on dark shirts, we want to print white underneath this entire piece of artwork to back it up and keep the colors nice and rich when they go over a dark shirt. So let's... Uh, Let's first make our undercolor layer uh, of white. Um, now, this white up here, of course, is called white. It's the paper white. The thing about this one is that you can never make a separation of this white color. All it does is knock a hole out to show the white paper. So we're going to have to make ourselves a new swatch. So we'll get to our fill color here. we we'll go to new swatch. We can say this color is a spot color and we'll call it print white. Uh, go to an RGB idiom here. And now I could make this appear to be white, but I couldn't see it and neither could the guys at the t-shirt shop. So I'm going to leave it a little bit of a color so that when they look for that printing white, they'll see something. Okay, so we have our white color, Pantone, this one here. Okay, so the Jolly Four Colors. Now, would be a good idea to check right now just to see here. We have separations preview, which shows up under Windows here, such. Turn that on. Now, if I turn off this, one thing I notice is that my fish body color isn't there. So there's my thin color, there's my black color, but when I turn on cyan, magenta, yellow, they are making up this color, so I've got a problem with the color being mis, mis um, diagnosed here. Select this color, and sure enough, it's being colored with that one up there in the general RGBs. I go back here and make this the Pantone. So that's the Pantone, Pantone, and Pantone. Now the overprint preview should show us that there's our fish, there's this, and if I turn on CMY and K, turn off the black, these are the colors that I know I don't have, and I really know I don't have them because with everything else turned on, they don't create any artwork. Okay, so don't be uh, don't be over um, overly sure of yourself and decide these. Colors are there and never check for the CMYK because you can have some uh, nasty surprises. All right, the white underprinting layer. Let's take this whole layer here. Let's copy it. This is everything that would want to turn into a white layer that goes underneath the, the entire set of artwork. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go down to this layer. I'm going to paste that in place. So here's the entire fish again. And if I just go use the Pathfinder Unite, it converted all of those parts into one great big shape. Go to Fill, Print White. And so now I have a chunk of white that will go underneath this stuff. Now what I don't want to happen on especially like a black shirt is if if one of these colors gets out of alignment I'm going to see a little white line 
on my white shirt going around the object. So what I want to do is go to the stroke of this and I'm going to use the white, the paper white color as my stroke color because it will not create a separation, it will not create anything that prints and all it does is, of course I have to select it first, all it does is creates a white shape around the whole thing that shrinks it down in, in essence. And so if I want a one point shrinkage and I use the old standard going right down the middle alignment on my vector curves, if I put a two point on it, it's going to have a one point to the inside. So now I've got that shrunken down. Put a lock on that. Go up to this one. And so I have this thing ready to go. I would like to make my traps now. So I want to put a trap between these two colors. I want to put a trap between these and right here. And I'll put a trap on the bottom of that eyeball so that if anything gets out of alignment, <coughs> I don't see any gaps. So what goes over what? What goes under what? Um, silk screen inks are very thick and they can cover a lot of stuff. But if, um, if I had my guesses, I'd say that the orange would cover the turquoise better than the turquoise would cover the orange. The black will, of course, cover anything. Um, so I think I want to take this little bit here and put some turquoise underneath the orange. Same thing here and here. And then I will print the turquoise first, the fin color second, and then the eyeball third. So, here we go. Now we saved some trapping pieces earlier. Um, what I don't see is my eyeball. So let me copy that. See, wrong one here. Copy. Let me lock that off. Let me go back to traps, unlock that, paste it in here. Okay, so there are my trapping pieces. So let's just kind of go piece by piece. I want that line, I want this intersection here, that one, and that one. So let's just start with this top one up here. So there's several ways I could get only this line here. Uh, I could use the path eraser or the scissor tool that shows up usually underneath the eraser. The scissor tool is pretty, pretty precise for this. So I'm going to hit the command key while the scissor tool is active to light up the, the layer. By the way, the traps layer is showing up with a yellow outline. Um, that's hard to see. Just because it decides to be yellow doesn't mean that you have to live with it. So I can go here and pick an entirely new, wonderful color. Uh, why don't we pick ochre? Okay, so right back here I've got the scissor tool. I command click. I can see the points a little bit better because they're not yellow. And so I click on this. That will cut that point. Go down here, cut that point. I'm going to select this part and arrow key it down and I can see, yep, I split it apart. I'll delete it. With the delete key, I'll select it. I don't want to fill on it, right? And I don't want a black stroke on it, so I will ensure that I have a no fill. I have a stroke, and the stroke is what color? It's going to be the fish body color that will slip up underneath that more robust fin. So we apply that stroke. While I'm at it, I will say overprint that stroke. So we have our first trap. There might be a little bit showing if it got out of registration, but it's 
one point. Not a big deal. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with this one here. So we select the scissor, click right on that point. It kind of pokes the control points out when it does its scissoring so you can see that it's happening. I top selected the top part again. I'm going to use the arrow key to move it up. Check my work. Yep, that's the one I want to get rid of. Once again, delete it. Um, we will give this the stroke. Actually, we want to select it. Give it the stroke. Flip this around. Nope, not, excuse me, not. Okay, so we have the stroke here, which we will overprint. So all this overprinting allows the colors to go down over one over the other and not knock each other out. Because uh, we're having a peaceful design here, we want no knockouts. Okay, so this final one, we want to get this part of it to cover the interface between the fin and the body. So once again, we use our scissors, cut, cut, check our work here by pulling that away with the cursor. Yep, that's the part I do not want. And this is the no fill on that. The stroke of it will be, once again, the body of the fish color. Once I select it, of course. Okay. Once again, no, no fill. And the magic overprint stroke. Okay, so we've got the three pieces that go between the fins and the body. Now here's the eyeball. Same thing, we want this bottom part here to have some of that body color go up underneath the black eye. So once again, like this, like that, we select that. That's the part I don't want. Here we go. Select that. It doesn't have a fill. Select that. It has a stroke of that. Okay, so these all have a stroke of the fish body color. And let's see how close we are to done. So here's our top color. I'm going to unlock this one. I'm going to check this and I want to make sure these fills are overprinting also. So certain that they are not knocking holes out underneath anything that they contact with. So if we turn on over print preview, okay, we don't see what we want to see yet. So turn that off. Let's see, over print preview, oh, because these colors weren't turned on. But I noticed that I had a problem here. So it looks like our eyeball might have a stroke on it. So we'll unlock that, go here, and by golly it does have a stroke on it. Take that stroke off, and now we'll do another overprint preview, and we see that we don't have any outline there. There's our eyeball. There's this. There's that. You can see this extra dark line here is the trapping area where that goes one color. This color here goes up in underneath the the orange. Here's our 
printing white. So that's the trap, the one point from the trap there on the printing white. Here's the this is the one point we we're seeing uh, what are we seeing on that? Better check that. Make sure that we have the right amount of stroke on those things. So this one here, turn that off, turn that trap there. That has a stroke of one point, which should be two points. That's what's happening. They didn't seem to be the same. Once again, two points, two points, and two points. So we're not, uh, not skimping on the, uh, the trapping amount. So now you can see that really well. And you can also see the, let's see, you can see a stroke here. Let me double check one more time, make sure that the fish body, yep, it's over printing. Okay, so there's our fish pretty well fixed up. We don't have cyan in it, we don't have magenta in it, we don't have yellow in it, we do have black in it. We have that color for the body, we have that color for the fins, and underneath it all, a slightly reduced white printer. And so we have four colors on this t-shirt design that add up to this. And the final stage is if we wanted to proof this out even farther, we'd go to print it. And when we went to print, we'd find ourselves a printer that is capable of doing color separations. We'd say general. We'd say wouldn't be a bad idea to just turn on either color bars and registration marks, or you could do all printers marks. Since there's no trimming to be done on this, the registration of color would do it. And we would go to output, and instead of composite, we do separations. It's going to make a separation of these. It's not going to use the CMYK colors except for the black. And we would run this out on the laser printer, and each one of these colors would come out as a black separation on paper, which is what the t-shirt shop will do and they will create uh, their screens from these printed out in black on translucent uh, stock that they use to make photo stencils. So that is um, how to build this happy fish with all of the traps and the underprinting and everything ready to go for the printer. Now one more thing, because we built these trapping shapes and gave them a two-point stroke. If the printer said, I want more or less trapping amount, it's easy to just go here and change that amount of stroke. Also, if we decided later on that we wanted to print this shirt um, like over the breast pocket of a t-shirt and it was only going to be three inches wide, we could reduce this down and then go back and re reassign these strokes to make sure that they are still two points because um, oftentimes your strokes will scale down with the fish and you still, even if it's a smaller design, you want two points of uh, stroke to give a, the printer one point of, of leeway for their registration. So that is pretty much the end of the story. Um, as I went along through this, I saved a version of this at each stage, which is not a bad idea when you're building things like this, that if something goes terribly wrong, you can go back to part one, part two, part three of your evolving design, and uh, everything will you can recover with a minimum of grief. Uh, it used to be that Illustrator would corrupt its files quite regularly, and you always wanted to do that on any project because you could lose all your work if you worked with only one version of the file. But 
It's better today. Anyway, we are done. This is a shirt, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs>